Hey, it's Drybear. Dungeonborn launched into early access this week, and they also just drew a line in the sand on how they're going to monetize the game and what their structure is going to be like. So today, let's talk about the early access launch and their posts revolving that. So they have decided to be true free to play. For the longest time, we were wondering how they were going to monetize the game. They talked about how they wanted it to be accessible to everyone, but they never really stood their foot and planted it in the ground on what exactly they were going to do with the monetization scheme. So along with early access, they have announced that it will be not just free to play, but true free to play. So what they want to do is basically what Dark and Darker is doing now, but a little bit cheaper. And we'll get into that in a minute. But they said that they will be launching on Steam with true free to play. And what this means is that everything gameplay oriented will be completely accessible to you. You won't be buying classes. You won't be buying gear. You won't be buying skills, maps, game modes, stashes, uh, shared stash or any of that. Anything gameplay related aside from trading is going to be uh, part of the game for just downloading it. Right now, you can download the game. I do recommend the game. I think it's it's awesome if you like uh, RPG, uh, like extraction, RPG extraction games like this. I think you'll have a great time with it. Um, if you you know prefer a little something a little bit more gritty and a little bit more hardcore, Dark and Darker is there as well. And there are some other ones that have tried to meet this market, but I think Dungeon Board is probably the first one after Dark and Darker to actually be a well-made, uh, you know, viable game product. So all the gameplay items in game can be experienced for free so if you're free you can you know have multiple character slots in game you can make as many characters that fill that as want you can have access to all of the classes all of the abilities you can access all of that you can gain access to all of the queues so you can enter into the lobby you can play all of the queues all of the game modes you can do pvp there's no restrictions there for free to play so they want to be able to make that as part of their free experience however you will have to buy an auction membership pass and this is about uh oh, just over five dollars uh usd so if you're if you're wondering for a price measure there this will give you access to the the true full auction house there you can access the basic auction so i haven't activated it here on this account but you can see that i can buy the basic auction which will sometimes give you it just it's like buying a item and it randomly rolls it's like identifying items from the shop um so you'll be able to do the buyout trades only there's no bidding there's no scaling prices you can just go to the auction house and buy these items based on the availability and the rarity on it as well. So you can buy some of these as well. Pick these up based on min price. And if they're available for buyout for a single price, you can grab them. For the overall, like the auction trades portion, which is going to be the uh, like actually auctioning with other players, which is the true kind of bizarre function, you will have to buy the auction house listing privilege, which again is just over $5 in order to access that. You can bid on items items, but you can't go through the auction uh, side or sell items uh, from that standpoint as well, which is going to be a little bit more limited. You can still get the items you need, but you won't be able to make a whole bunch of money or join in the community aspect of the items. They point out that it does allow them to generate revenue because it is $5 per player and it prevents abuse and ensures players that can genuinely uh, find valuable items and less, less spam on the auction house, that sort of thing. We'll dive into um, these first two points in just a second because there's something that needs to be mentioned there overall. Um, and you can also unlock additional stash tabs for free. So you get four in total. So when you go to your stash, open your stash up, you can actually buy these for gold. So this is just going to be, I think it's 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 gold, which by the way, is literally nothing. You can get probably like eight to 15,000 gold a run if you fill out your inventory and come back and sell stuff at the merchant. And that's not even including the higher difficulties or higher rarities. It's almost nothing to get these extra stashes. And by default in this game, your stash is 100% shared between all of your characters so as soon as you switch to another character you like go to a different character load it up go to your stash it's going to be the exact same stash all of it is shared you don't have to worry about that and also if you can see in the top corner my gold is global as well your gold and crystals are global across all of your characters you don't have to trade gold gold as soon as you leave the game like you pick up gold coins and when you leave a when you extract it gets converted into a currency in the top right corner it doesn't take your inventory you don't have to buy bags of gold and put it in the bags now they want to explain and back up why they wanted to go from the pay to play model to a free to play with minimal transactions and we'll get into my opinion on this in just a second but let's go through their vision on why they want to support it this way their main focus is around preventing cheaters and if you look at any online game 
cheating, you know, as long as there is software, there will be hackers and cheaters. It's just how it is. It, it's, it's a battle you can never win. And for every person that is in cybersecurity or anti-cheat that is very good at their job, there is someone who is equally as good at getting around their preventative measures and finding ways to battle it. So there's going to be that back and forth. And because of this, they want to make sure that the trade itself is limited for people that have just have a free to play account. This is a big thing that Valve has been doing for a long time having a ranked pass for their online game so that if people end up you know getting banned for cheating and they have to come back and cheat they have to pay again it, it pays valve and then valve uses that money to develop new games or pay for more anti-cheat activities that sort of thing uh, lots of mmos will have restricted trade options where when you first get items or you first get currency you can't trade with it for a couple days and that's so that they have time to recognize bot accounts or uh bannable accounts and ban them so they can prevent that from getting into the market and ruining the economy and the same thing goes for this as well i don't think this is the strongest argument for just going free to play in general but the next argument is going to be the best one for them right now and that is because they want to be able to have a lot of people queuing for the game and this is where the decision between premium or upfront like pay to play uh, versus free to play comes in because if you have no access barrier for the game itself that can create a lot more players in general right you know that any game that's free to play Fortnite, PUBG, whatever game you're talking about MOBAs, FPS, MMOs it doesn't matter if it goes free to play, you will get more players in the game. And that's kind of great because if you are pay to play, say this game was $60 and eventually got to a point where there weren't enough players playing the game to get queues going to launch matches, or even if you did launch matches, there wasn't enough players to make good matchmaking based on like how good they were or what gears level they had. It makes a huge problem. But I have concerns about this game going true free to play unless they start aggressively monetizing other options in the game or providing good deals. DLC options for people to buy, which is what they look at here. They do have a $10 DLC right now, which gives you bandages, throwable flasks, and healing potions, as well as a cosmetic cloak. You get a blue torch, which kind of looks like the torch from Baldur's Gate 3, and a blue cloak cosmetic in-game, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. All of these are very easily farmable. Healing potions are like 500 gold a pop. You can also craft them with the currency and the materials you get running into the game, so this is kind of nothing. I feel like this isn't a crazy... This is more like a supporter pack. You're just saying, I support the devs, I want to support their their continued progress, keep supporting the game, um, make sure that the game doesn't, doesn't, doesn't die out. But I feel like with stash tabs being not all that expensive and also not all that needed right now and that the, the, the their ten dollar pack is not super super enticing in the options there i think they need to have a lot more in the game to make it a lot more viable so that they can keep making content and keep moving forward whereas i feel like games like this really probably should be more on like a dead by daylight uh, uh formula whereas they have an up, a small reasonable upfront cost anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars usd and then they have champ expansions that can be five dollars each or seven dollars each that they focus on increasing and then they have in-game in ways to farm and unlock those so there's a path for everybody to get at the gameplay content but having some kind of paradigm for them to make enough revenue to keep the game alive now if you jump in game and go to the shop they do have cosmetics available so you can buy a nice torch skin and i think in general these look like really good like a lot of these look really awesome and if they keep pumping a content pipeline that allows them to get this going um, they can probably make a decent amount on this as well assuming there's a good activation amount for people that are like actually converting into paying users and buying these cosmetics in general uh you can buy the like i said there's about five dollars here um for that and then you can buy these stones this is uh this is a linear scale for the currency as well so the more you buy the more you get the better it is um right so this is 144 770 1600 and then the auction house listing is about 400 which at a average valuation on these moonstones is like five point two uh, dollars to pick that up and that's a one like one-time purchase you gain access to the trade options there but i have very real concerns about this being i mean yes it is fair and yes it is uh you know easier to market but it also is something that may not be uh, enough of a cash grab or enough of a cash pull for them to revenue like uh, bring in revenue and keep the game going so i would love to see them you know at least if they're going to go down this road really dive into content like adding in you know 
three to eight new cosmetic items a month in order to kind of keep the game flowing, but also maybe even make it so that like maybe cosmetic items can be dropped by players when you kill them and then you can wear the cosmetic on top of it, right? So like if someone buys something, like say they're someone who spends, they bought those, those demon horns that we saw, maybe there's a cosmetic slot and when you kill that person, you can wear those demon horns for as long as you have them, right? So like not only are you being able to flex on others because you spent, but maybe the free-to-play players can gain some of that by taking you out in the game and wearing it for a limited time. Uh, we even saw a lot of games, especially like uh, Chinese games, Korean games that do like limited time on things. Like maybe if you pick it up off someone, it lasts for three days or something like that. So having options, I think, to help monetize this or maybe having more ways to support the devs is going to be great. But I just want to kind of put my point on this, that it feels like there's been a lot of games that have gone the route of being more fair and more honest. And then within a year or two, they close their studio because they're just not making enough revenue in order to support that. So I guess the other message is if you really like Dungeon Board, buy their $10 DLC pack, pick up the cloak, pick up the torch, uh, buy their $5 market uh, well, auction house pass and help support them that way. And hopefully they're able to kind of create new ways to bring in revenue because they ultimately decided that they wanted to have more players in the game rather than less um, by sacrificing their upfront fee with the purchase of the game itself. There's one more thing that's worth mentioning because we looked at this when a review of the uh, their play test, their last play test of the game, but they actually ended up making a change to the class design for the characters in, um, in Dungeonborn as well previously and some of these haven't caught up yet so you look at like pyromancer right now you can see that they have two skills there's a q and an e and it was locked and i i feel like their original design was to have simple classes with passives activated and then to add a whole bunch of classes right like if you have a roster of like a fighting game roster of like 20 to 30 classes and they all have one you know two skills locked each that works great, um, but if you have a smaller roster, more like an ARPG roster or something like that, um, you need to have classes that are a lot more fleshed out and interesting. So what they decided to do was they added a bunch more skills to the classes that exist in the game. So they got a little bit more complicated, a little bit more fleshed out. So now each class, not all of them have caught up to this yet, but most of the classes in the game right now have the ability to choose between two different options for their Q key and two different options for their E key, which means that when you go into game and you select your class, and go to your loadout, you can start choosing between these different skills, which means you can specify your play style a little bit. This means they don't have to make as many classes because there's more variety in the individual classes and probably means they can spend more of their content time, like their 3D modelers, their animators, um, their riggers, um, their concept artists, all of them can focus on making shop items. And maybe that's why they decided to go down that road, right? Because when you look at adding abilities to characters that is less on the content team and more on VFX, sound effects, game design, and programming, right? They're the ones that are making the abilities that work, but they don't need to make new characters. Those The people that work on making characters can work on making cosmetics. So I think that's kind of what they're looking at. Um, the question is, are they gonna be able to reach a point where they can create enough in-game items that are worth buying to keep themselves going? Which on that point, they're looking great. They are actually at around they're having around 25,000 uh, CCU on, on the daily when they uh, obviously the play test was here and kind of different numbers but their first day launching into early access they were in the teens generally by the way even for some of the most successful games you would see anywhere from like four to ten thousand CCU on the first day so breaking into the teens is a good sign and they're able to kind of maintain that and also this graph is very good um, the fact that it kind of stabilized as people went to bed in some regions uh, people got on in other regions and started playing the game um, and sort of moving up here and now they're moving into the 20s so we could see in the next week or two or month this start to climb up and start to catch up with its competitor dark and darker and start to stabilize there and again if they can figure out a good content pipeline free to play is definitely the way to go because they can keep their cues active there's a lot of people playing the game which you know, in, in a loot extraction game, you don't want to be extracting against NPCs all the time. You want to be able to have other players around um, in this paradigm. So having more players is here. So I hope this works out and it looks like the uh, the CCU numbers are supporting it. But let me know what you think about their choice to go true free to play uh, with, with all gameplay options being available, minus the auction house, which is only $5 USD, which is even cheaper than the 15 that you need to spend in Dark and Darker. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.